everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and my microwave light started randomly working again. I don't know why, but I'm going with it. <laughs> but anyway, today we are going to leave no dye behind in the form of a lot of almost empty containers of Wilton food coloring. And I mean, this is a mess. <laughs> this is a big, big mess in here. Um, but we're going to use them and sort of see what they want to do as we dye some yarn. Now, there's a chance that I might regret this, but if I do, we can always over dye it. Uh, someone asked me recently how often I actually over dye the yarn after the fact, and the truth is, uh, not often at all. Um, but I'm bringing in 300 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. Um, this yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, uh, one of my favorite yarn bases, and I'm arranging it here in the pan. Now there's no acid in here yet, and I'm adding some more of the pre-soak water, um, so that way... So that way the yarn is nice and covered. And I am actually gonna turn on the heat, but leave it on low, because I want this to warm up to help the colors I'm gonna use dissolve. And yeah, I guess that's my plan. Now, the tools and equipment that I am using today are dedicated for dyeing yarn and aren't also used for food, but we are dyeing with food coloring. So I just wanted to throw that out there, and so I don't mix cooking things with non-cooking things, so I just really wanted to throw that out there. Food coloring is in the acid dye category, so it works to dye wool-based yarns or other protein-based yarns. It'll work on other animal fibers, but it won't work on plant fibers like cotton, linen, etc., or synthetics like acrylic and polyester. First things first, let's go for, for some Wilton's Violet. Um, and honestly, I have no idea how much or little dye there is in them, and they've got clearly got dye on <laughs> the surface because there's some green coming out here, and I am super randomly just adding this <laughs> in, grabbing the dye, and pouring it on. So this is just going to be super, super random, and I'm going to be trying to use up as much of the dye as I possibly can. Now, as the water gets warmer, this will get a little easier, and it's not going to be perfect <laughs> because, well, uh, I'm not going to be able to rinse it all out completely, but we will do our best. Um, and there's still more in that one, but I'm going to come over and do, start doing another color, like a teal. Um, and actually, I think I will add vinegar sooner rather than later, so that way things can start striking. Um, but as I do that, I will leave that there. All right, I'm going to come over and add one, two, three tablespoons of white vinegar, and it will move around as I do this. Now, the dye likely is not penetrating very far into the yarn. We will be flipping and layering colors. Uh, that at least is my plan. And no, Rebecca, you're not going to hang on to all these tubes. <laughs> I was sitting there wondering like, ooh, can I use them for something? And the answer is no, you should not use them for something. Um, there might be little bits of dye that doesn't get used up and I'm not gonna worry about it. Uh, oh dear, this is this one's a mess. Um, it's time to let some of this go. Uh, let some of it go and sort of move on from what's here in the leftovers. But I think that we're gonna create something really, really fun. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I think that these leftovers are going to go further than I expected. I don't know if I want to, for example, um, bring in some other colors that are not as cool toned as these ones that I've used so far, um, but we will 
pay attention whoop, to that as we proceed. And I'm trying hard to not make a huge mess. Uh -huh. Here is a different type of bottle. Um, one of our Colorite bottles. And the thing about this that is fun is that I am just like randomly filling and emptying things. And so I could have filled them not in a pan uh, to try to use and do something, but something about this is unique <laughs> and fun. But shaking it up. There's no doubt that we're going to have breaking in here. Uh, mostly we have probably red three and blue one in here so far with some bits of uh, yellow as well. Okay, that is pretty empty. But anyway, this is my uh, plan for today. So I will be proceeding and adding more color. I think that I mean, as I press down, I can see that there is still color, and if I move, you can see that there is color that hasn't absorbed yet. It is not warm um, yet. It is still very, very cool, and the acid hasn't gone everywhere. So, um, yeah, I'm going to speed things up and actually probably turn up the heat into medium and carry on. I continued adding more of those empties, the same colors that I've already introduced, and honestly, I love the colorway that we're creating, but there is a lot more pigment in these jars than I thought, which is probably the reason why they're leftovers and I held on to them because I couldn't bear to get rid of them. And so we're getting something very like watercolory, mermaid-y, broken. And so I've got plenty of violets and other blues <laughs> in my leftovers. So I think I'm likely gonna stick with that color family. If the jars had been a lot more empty, then I probably would have brought in more colors and spread it less. But anyway, uh, then when I was satisfied with the color on the one side, I decided to let things sit for 10 minutes, and then we we're gonna flip the yarn. And I know that flipping the yarn probably will result in there being some blues that are spread out all over. In some places, the colors might strike, have struck already and in others maybe it hasn't yet but ultimately that is okay um, and I was really curious to see how much the colors had penetrated to the other side before I started layering on the colors afresh. The other thing that flipping the yarn did was help distribute that acid that we had set up for this project but really hadn't uh, had it distributed very well through, so moving the yarn will help with that. I did add a vial of Wilton's Black into the mix uh, because blacks really are like a purple, but they do actually have some yellows and stuff in there. Uh, and so the side and the colors on the second side look fairly different, but I do believe that we will be flipping again because there are sections that need more color. And we'll be likely adding more of the black and more violet because I have a lot of nearly empty violet containers. Hmm, I wonder why. <laughs> but I did go ahead and add three more tablespoons of white vinegar, focusing on the, uh, the sides that were more pigmented. And then we waited another 10 minutes before moving the yarn around again. I am really glad I decided to dye three skeins because if it was just one, like there would have been way too much dye. <laughs> Bringing in some more colors and royal blue, I started not waiting very long in between flipping the yarn, adding color, um, and just looking for spots that I thought needed to be broken up. And we've ended up with a beautiful, very Rebecca colorway. Very, very Rebecca. Um, but. Uh, in the end, I did add a little more water, added a little more dye, and then turned up the heat so we would be just below a simmer and let everything heat for 20 minutes. I just turned off the heat, and I'm expecting, yeah, it looks like that all, except for maybe a hint of blue, of the colors have cleared in here. Ugh, this is so fun. I love randomly applying colors, and even when you add color in stripes in certain areas, the more you move it and shift things around, the more layered the colors get, and the more random 
things become with placement. So anyway, I'm going to let this cool completely here in the pan. Uh, and then once it's nice and cool, we can go wash it. The problem with not knowing how much dye we added means that uh, if we see bleeding, it's hard to troubleshoot. Certainly, if you use way too much food coloring, you can then start to see some bleeding. But I think you'll also see that the black areas are gonna look purplish or red. Uh, it's sort of a hint now, but I don't know if that's coming across on camera. So I'm not seeing bleeding yet, but let's add some soap. Just a little bit of some clear dish soap. Because sometimes some of these colors might have a little something. But we are using cool tap water for the washing. Uh, I don't recommend using hot water at all. Um, because hot water can cause bleeding with acid dyes, not just food coloring, but also commercial acid dyes. And then the other thing is, make sure you store your yarn out of direct sunlight, because that can cause fading, specifically with food coloring, but also some other dyes. And I'm seeing a tiny hint of some blue, but that is not bad, and I'm not concerned about that. Um, the times when you start to worry about bleeding, or when you see bright color coming out, or when you see color coming out and then the color that you see in the yarn reducing in a noticeable way, because that happens when things definitely are not set. But a little bit of some blue runoff uh, is not super unusual. If it got... Okay, so that's a bit more, um, which means that I definitely want to wash it a few more times. Uh, I didn't see it in the pan, but soap can help uh, loosen up excess dye. The one problem in the winter of doing this is that it is so cold. Um, but this is the reason why we wash it, and I recommend doing a bleeding test before... Um, you say combine something like this with a pastel yarn. Um, but now what I'm gonna do is, I had just said don't use warm water, but I'm gonna add warmer water here, plus a splash of white vinegar. Uh, and this will help that bleeding stop and help my hand from feeling so completely cold. So the amount of bleeding we're seeing still is not troublesome, but is not a level that I would ignore. But you can see now that with that addition of vinegar, that color is not in that rinse anymore. So I could let it soak in the vinegar for a while, but for um, some giggles, we will proceed with the rinsing here just to demonstrate. But sometimes you may want to end up resetting the yarn again, by which I mean putting it in a fresh dye bath or a steamer basket with some vinegar and setting that color again. And the reason why you may want to do that uh, is because by rinsing and soaking the, the yarn, it's possible that we had some globs of dye on the surface and that with soap and washing, that dissolved and came out. Um, so sometimes then you can reset and then uh, see no more bleeding. But it's like a little bit of vinegar, and I'll do one more, was enough to stop it. Now, my tap water runs slightly acidic, uh, so I often don't have tr a lot of trouble getting things to stop bleeding. If your tap water is a little more alkaline, then you may want to leave the yarn with not a huge splash, but a tiny bit of vinegar, just to make sure it's more neutral. But let's see. Oh, that's cold. Yeah, I'm not seeing any more bleeding. So I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. It's really cold. Here is the finished dry yarn, and it is fun. It actually feels similar 
to some other yarn I've dyed with leftover food coloring in the past a little bit just because when we're combining all of these colors we are ultimately just combining five colors but because we're dealing with so many blues and purples with the exception of the black all of the blues that we use the dolphin actually dolphinium blue might have a little yellow but violet is just red three blue one royal blue is blue run with a little bit of red three dolphinium blue has and cornflower blue both are blue one red three maybe they could have some red 40 or some yellow in there as well but even the black is blue heavy and so yes there's some little bits of maybe yellow five and six mixed in maybe a little red 40 but ultimately what is in here are just combinations of the same ingredients and the reason why this makes a big difference or maybe not that big a difference with food coloring is that all food coloring in the United States is a mixture of these five components and so they also bind and separate at different rates which is why ultimately on the yarn having that cornflower blue blended with the violet and all these other things it can start to feel like maybe we only used Walton's violet and black um, and so I just you know think that that is worth pointing out but the yarn is fun and absolutely delightful it's also worth pointing out that the black we see in here really is more of a deep red because of the way the colors separate uh, the reds uh, that are in that black strike and then the blues spread out more uh, so that's just something I wanted to highlight I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. I have a lot more of these little vials on hand, so I have a feeling that this is something that we can recreate in the future, or maybe I should do a different technique with the rest of the vials. Please leave me a comment below and let me know if you think I should try to do something just like this or mix it up a little bit. As time goes on, I am playing more and more with commercial acid dyes, but I'm never going to leave food coloring behind. I love it. It's how I got started, and it's a really, really beginner-friendly way to figure out if you enjoy the hobby and the process of dyeing yarn at home. If you've enjoyed watching my journey, please make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications on by pressing that bell. Watching and engaging these videos is the biggest way that you can support the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. If you're looking for other ways to support the content, check out the video description. I have affiliate links and places you can find me on social media, Patreon, Etsy, all kinds of stuff. I include a lot of information down there, so it's worth checking out. Thank you so much for watching.